Okay, uh, John Scanlon, thank you very much for being a guest on the Professional Hypnotherapist Podcast. Thank you, and lovely to be here. Now, John, um, you're a hypnotherapist in practicing in Gorey, isn't yes. it? County Wexford. Yeah. And what was the motivation for you, John, to get into hypnotherapy and hypnosis per se? Um, it's an interesting question. People ask me that from time to time. And I, I, I about 15 years ago, I got into meditation and, and into Reiki and into that kind of energy. And about six years ago, I discovered hypnotherapy and hypnosis. And I discovered that the transitions and the changes that people made were much deeper and much more, they, they were much, long, much longer lasting. Um, because I had always been fascinated by the mind, but I didn't necessarily know a whole lot about it until really about six or seven years ago. And the, the idea of the conscious mind and, and the unconscious mind and how the changes are the things that affect us in our youth are what actually drive us to a large degree today, unless we're actually aware of it. Um, and I suppose there was some personal stuff that I was going through as well that hypnotherapy really helped me with. Um, and then I just decided to go into it full time. And well, I study it in depth full time. Um, I, I, you know, as I said to you, I'm not full time working at it. I, um, I kind of work at it two to three days a week um, as, as it is at the minute. So. Um, yeah, so that was my motivation for getting into it in the first place. Um, and I studied with Carol Anthony with the Institute of Clinical Hypnotherapy in Ireland. Um, and after that, I actually studied with Mike Mandel in Canada. Um, and it was a different type of learning for me um, from what Carol Anthony would have done, which was great. I absolutely loved it. I still use it all today. but. Um, Mike introduced me to a different aspect of hypnotherapy um, and particularly Ericksonian hypnotherapy that I actually kind of really, really liked. And, um, and I actually went to, Mike had a, had a two day event in London um, in 2018 or 19. So I went to that um, and I absolutely just loved it, made so many connections. It happens to be around the time of the UK Hypnosis Convention at the same time. Went there. And yeah, so the rest, as they say, is that was that's where the journey all began. Good, good. And <clears throat> indeed, and no better people could you have trained with. Yeah. The, the men, the people you've described. Uh, what type of transformations have you witnessed as a therapist with clients? Um <laughs> there's been some amazing transformations there have been people who been i mean you've had you have the smoking obviously you have the weight loss where people have been losing the weight as so when i'm working with weight loss patients or i'm working with and most of what i would do is work with anxiety anyway but a lot of the weight loss would actually be anxiety driven in the first place it's kind of stress it's all stuff that's 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 coming from the past. It may have been a comment somebody said to them a long time ago, and they're, you know, for that reason, and they're not even aware of it. And it's suddenly there's an insight. It's like a light bulb goes on, mm. and it allows for those changes to take place. Um, and it, for, in most cases, what I see is just literally people putting that light switch on, where they can go, oh, you know. You, you might do something very simple would be, say, if you were to do, let's say, a stiff arm exercise with somebody, you know, where their, their arm is completely stiff or their hands are locked together or whatever it is. And then you go, right, just relax your arm. And you say, did you have a bar in your arm? And they go, no. So, right, it was just a thought. And it just opens the doorway for all these other transitions to take place. You know? And opening the doorway is indeed... A uh, a very apt uh, expression uh, because you specialize in anxiety yeah. in your practice. Yeah. And, um, what was the motivation, if I may ask you, to specialize in anxiety in the first place? I knew a lot of people who 
would I would have had a, a slight touch of it myself. My mother would have been a very anxious person. Um, so I would have been familiar with it growing up as a child. Um, and then I was working with a lot of people who were anxious. And I saw the effect both on them and on those around them, actually. That's the other side of it, because I think sometimes what us as therapists forget is that while we make the change to one person, it actually ripples into the rest of their lives. Um, you know, and people see a difference in that person, and particularly when someone is anxious. It's when, when the anxiousness is gone and they're more relaxed about life, all of their environment becomes more relaxed as well. So you, you'd often get feedback like that. And to use an expression, there, there's a certain freedom that they, yes. they, they latch on to that freedom that was just sort of perhaps locked away. Correct. Um, and I mean, I think the beauty of it is no matter what the techniques that you use that make somebody uh, or that help somebody, because I think one of the the, the greatest learnings was, was that we as therapists don't actually make any of the changes. It's the client that makes the change. All we can do is provide words or tools or techniques that actually help them make that change. And it's almost like sometimes they need a various different technique. What might work for one won't work necessarily work for another. And the, that technique just gives them the freedom to make that choice. That choice that, oh, I interpreted something that happened way back when as this, but now that I look at it as an adult as I am today, it's like, oh, why did I do that? And it's like the foundation of that belief just disappears and it all starts to crumble down. And I suppose it's it's the the job uh, of the therapist to be dynamic to such an extent that yeah. you find that key. Yes, absolutely. I have been described as a very perseverance person. <laughs> oh, Client have described me like that. Yes, <laughs> that's good. Now, John, um, in your in your relatively short uh, time in the therapy world. You, you have made huge leaps forward in terms of that you're now organizing the Irish <laughs> Hypnotherapy Conference. So what's yeah. the motivation for that? It's really, really ironic, Aidan, because, or not ironic, but like six months ago, this actually didn't exist. This was not even, this was barely a concept in my head. Barely, barely, barely. And I suppose, I mean, I described that, time when I went to, to London and I had the, the few days with Mike Mandel and Chris Thompson, absolutely loved it, the in-person rather than doing stuff online. It was the same when I was training with Carl Anthony, it's the in-person. And, and I also went to the, the convention for a couple of days at that point in time. I met loads of friends, loads of new people, and I just loved being in that. I mean, you're doing something that you love, it's very powerful and affecting and helping people to change. And I kind of went, okay. So particularly during COVID, which most of us would have found, you know, fairly difficult. Um, you know, the restriction of freedom and all that kind of stuff. A lot of the friends that I'd made in, in the UK were great because we were zooming in. We were doing a lot of work on each, with each other as groups or whatever. And then I went back in last November and they had the, the second one was or my second one was last November and it's three days. It's obviously a, a fairly large event. I don't know if you've been, but it's three days. There's three or 400 people there. There's workshops from eight in the morning to six in the afternoon for all the days. Um, and I was kind of sitting having coffee with two friends and I went, oh, we really should do something like this in Ireland. And literally it was like that light bulb that I described with clients and suddenly it's, it's the light bulb with me. And I, it was there, it was just kind of like there. So I, I, I came home and Mary Gregan is the, the lady who runs the, the PAMS Health and Wellbeing Center where I practice and Karina McAvoy does as well. And um, I said to Mary, she is a hypnotherapist, oh, 
Apologies. I said to Mary, um, am I mad to do this? And she went, no. And then I made another call to Ken Falconer, who was one of my trainers with, with um, the Institute of Clinical Therapy. And he says, no, you're not mad either. And I went, okay, there we go. So I had met Freddie on a number of occasions and then I met him again in January in Dublin. Um, and he said, yeah, I'll be there. Um, I, I've trained with Carl Smith. I know Carl quite well. Um, the, and Carl Anthony, I would know because I, I would have trained with Carl. Stephen Travers would be, obviously he's part of the EAPH. He's also trained with, with, with Carl in the UK. He'd be part of the, um, the hypnotic masterminds group that, that exists over there. Um, so suddenly it just all came together. And for me, really, it, 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 it's, I suppose it's three things. Um, it's an opportunity to learn and not have to travel across water to get there, which is the first thing. Um, it's a chance to meet both people I wouldn't have seen in a while in, in a hypnosis-related function because there are very, so few events here. Um, and also to meet loads of new people, like you and I hadn't met until this morning, and I know it's virtual, but... Yes. Um, so it is... And when people meet, and it's one of the things I like, and it was Freddie said it to me, actually. He said, you know, so much of these, so much of the enjoyment and the connections and actually even the expansions that take place within people, whether it's ideas, whether it's concepts, whether it's new ventures, whatever it is, they happen around coffee, around the lunch, around, you know, um, so yeah, there is the motivation and there is the, the reason why it's the first one. Um, there isn't, if you like, a national register of people. So Stephen McGill, who's a marketing expert, has been doing all of my Facebook stuff, thankfully, God bless him. So it's reaching more and more and more people. Um, and all I can do is let people know it's there. And however many want to turn up and avail of it. Let's put it this way. If I wasn't organizing it, I'd still be going. <laughs> Excellent. Now, you mentioned um, the uh, speakers uh, yes. on, on the conference. Um, just give us a, a, a list again, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so there is eight speakers. So it's over two days. It's Saturday the 20th and Sunday the 21st. Okay. So um, pardon me? There's two days in it. Two days, yeah. Um, and there is a dinner on the Saturday night. Okay. Um, the, the speakers are there. There's Ken Falconer, who has his own practice up in Larne. He's a trainer. Um, he does a lot. He's a, a mind coach as well. So he does an awful lot of athletic training and stuff like that. Um, there is Stephen Travers, um, who you know very well. And Stephen is originally from Dundalk. Absolutely. And he will be he'll be demonstrating the havening technique on, on the day. He's a, a world's expert in that. He's one of the people people go to. Um the in then there's Jason O'Callaghan. Um Jason has one of the largest clinics in the country. He also has a um an entertainment business as well. He manages to balance the two between them. Um it from a business perspective, and he will speak a lot about his business model. Um, and then there's Freddie, Freddie Jackman, who will be the last speaker on the Saturday. Um, and I'm just so looking forward to, to, to Freddie. And I saw him in January in Dublin, and, and but I just always find him absolutely amazing. Yeah, um, we, had, we had uh, Freddie uh, do a, a CPD for us. Right. And he's also been featured on the, the EAPH podcast. Sorry, continue there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, on the Sunday, then, there's Karina McAvoy, and she's going to talk about the children and adolescents and, uh, and, and how she in, both enjoys that and works with it and all her tools and techniques. Um, and it's actually really interesting because I was talking to Freddie on one of the days last week uh, and Freddie had done a whole load of a series of stuff with children. Um, uh, so I, I, the two of those will link together on that and see where that goes. Um, yes. 
the uh, Carl Anthony, who has his Carl Anthony method, which he uses to, again, it's all trauma release. Um, then there is Stephen McGill, who is a marketing expert. Right. And there's an element of both business and marketing here, and, there, and it's very specific, and I'll come back to that then. And then you have Carl Smith, who has the UK Hypnosis Academy. It's a really successful. Um, he will both do some demonstrations in terms of um, kinetic shift, uh, which I use, and I, I, I really, really like it a lot. It's very effective. Um, and his mental welfare coaching, which he does. Uh, but he'll also talk about business, um, because I think that's one of the things. And it's funny, because I had a conversation with Stephen Miguel, and I'm, I can't speak for other training schools and, and other colleges, but when I was talking with Stephen, I said, you know, your stuff was on the very last day and your stuff was absolutely brilliant. And I've gone back and I've looked at it since. But on the day, we also had our exam. So we weren't actually really focused. Very much. <laughs> you mean, yeah, that's the kind of a problem we always have. So, but in a lot of cases, as therapists, we love to be therapists. We don't necessarily want to do the business aspect and the marketing aspect of it. And that's so that's, it's that's really important, John, because yeah. that's a really important point you made. Because, um, you know, the, there there is a certain well, what would I describe as an altruism about therapists. You know, they want to help people. Yes. And that's the primary motivation. But also we must realize that behind it all, you know, we have to earn a living. Absolutely. So, so would you speak to that in terms of the business and marketing? Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. And I am a business person, right? I, I, I said to you, I'm an accountant. That's actually what I do. And um, so I understand finance. I understand all of that kind of stuff really well. But when I get into, if you like, hypnotherapy mode, I, I switch completely, it, you know. Um, and I know a lot of therapists exactly come from that space of it's altruistic. I just literally want to help that person. And, and that gives that element of rapport. It gives every, it's perfect. It's beautiful. And it's the way it should be. And um, you're there for the client. And the client is the most important aspect of this. But, it, it, you know, I'll sometimes use the analogy of, of a mobile phone, you know, and I'm holding it up there now. But what's the thing we do to keep that mobile phone healthy and fit? We charge it, we plug it in at night, we give it what it actually needs. As therapists, we need that. So we also need to, um, we need to live. Yeah. So therefore, to live, there has to be a business model or the, the, the actual practice doesn't survive. Indeed. Um, so that's the reason behind it. And in a world where marketing is absolutely key um, of, of, of getting it out, getting out that, you know, people's services there, what it is it does and how it can help people to transform their lives. Um, and it's not just, you know, it's not just to release that, that individual fear or stop that smoking habit or lose that weight. In a lot of cases, it can be used. And, and I love the model of, if you like, a, a coaching model um, and using hypnotherapy as part of that coaching model where you might have, say, a wheel of life, you know, where you've got your work, your finances, your family, your and using hypnotherapy as a, as a circle to boost each and every one so that the quality of your life improves. It's, it's a, almost, it's an, an holistic approach. Yes. Yeah, and hypnotherapy can be used for that as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because we know that the power to changes that are made through hypnotherapy, they're deeper, they're far more effective and, and they last. Yeah. So if you can get somebody to believe in themselves who can suddenly start to get fit, and can start to manage their finances better and earn more money and have better relationships at home and yeah, and on it goes. Absolutely. Now you mentioned the conference is on two days. Yes. So would you give us a little a rundown on we say day one? I presume is the Saturday. Day one is the Saturday, and actually I gave it to you in the order in which they appear. So sorry. <laughs> okay. um, and I suppose the other thing that just to mention on that is the 
and I, I've, I've mentioned this before, just in some of the, the stuff that I've done, but there is the whole thing of meeting new friends, old friends. There's also the, uh, the concept of creating a community, a larger community of, of, of hypnotherapists so that more people. So my son actually uses this lovely term. He says, not a community, an ecosystem that grows, that expands. And I really like that concept okay. um, because I suppose we all know the value of, of what hypnotherapy can do. Um, and it's just making it more accessible to people mm -hmm. um, and maybe breaking down some of those barriers. Hypnosis, I mean, hypnotherapy is therapy using hypnosis. That's what it is. Hypnosis can be used for fun. Hypnosis can be used to improve people's overall well-being. Mm -hmm. um, so it's finding ways of just allowing hypnosis and particularly the therapy side of that to expand without maybe, you know, sometimes people will come in and I go, I'm not going to make you dance like a chicken, you know, that because sometimes people hold that view. But it is, hypnosis is and always will be used for entertainment. Uh, you know, you even when you get a group of therapists in the room, you'll find someone's hand is stuck to a table or someone, you know, because we do that, you know. Um, but it, so it is to build an ecosystem that can allow hypnotherapy to become a more popular tool and a more, that's more accessible to people. Mm -hmm. So, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, all I was going to do was do the order, but if you want to ask me on that, please. Do. The order, yeah, please. Yeah, go ahead. Um, okay, so uh, it starts, at, uh, the doors open at, at nine or nine on the Saturday morning, and it's okay. kind of half an hour or an hour of registration. It's half an hour of registration. Okay. Um, so the first speaker is, I think it's 9.45, and we're just balancing all of the, the schedules now. Um, and it's Ken Falconer. He'll open it. It'll, Ken will be about an hour. He'll talk about his business and particularly about both the coaching aspect of it, but also the measurement aspect of it. Um, and, and I'm interested to hear that because it's interesting proving our stuff and, and measuring. And there's yeah. actually more to come on that as we go through the day, because uh, there'll be another speaker who'll be talking about that as well uh, later on as the day goes on. Um, following that then is Stephen Travers, um, and Stephen will do the havening, and he Stephen will be demonstrating that uh, on stage. Um, then, then we've lunch. Then Jason O'Callaghan, and Jason is interesting because he has a really effective business model. Yeah. Um, but he's also going to be talking about a piece of research that they've just got published with the Mayo Clinic in in um, the states. Okay. So he's hoping to be letting people know about all of that. And he's done that with the medical profession in UCD. So that should be just an, that should be another interesting part. Um, and then the last speaker of the, of the day is Freddie, uh, Freddie Jackman. Um, and Freddie's going to demonstrate the arrow. He's going to demonstrate the total perception management technique that he has. Um, and as he said, and, and if anyone wants to look, his video is on the Irish hypnosis or Irish hypnotherapy conference page. Freddie, and you, you'll have heard him say this many times, he does it through the power of love, creating emotion. Um, and, and, and he's going to talk to that all through. Um, on the Sunday, then we have Karina. And again, I think that's 9.30 on the Sunday. Um, I should back go back a step because Saturday evening there will be a dinner um, and it's a chance for everybody just to sit, converse, you know, um, and all through there'll be coffee breaks and lunch breaks and all that kind of stuff. So, um, the On the Sunday then Karina will, will open on the Sunday morning um, and Karina will talk in most cases, there's Q&A as well. So if anyone wants to ask questions, that's absolutely, speakers are all lined up to, to, to address any questions people have. Um, Carol Anthony then will demonstrate the Carol Anthony method uh, at the second part of the morning. Um, 
and in the then we have lunch in the afternoon we have Stephen McGill uh, and all of these presentations will be roughly about an hour and a half about an hour and a half so Stephen will cover and he will also have about 30 minutes for Q&A and the other side of that is the speakers are also available all through the conference you know so just because someone hasn't spoke yet or you have and, and you want to ask them a question they're all there um, and he will address marketing um, and, and internet marketing particularly he works a lot with therapists anyway so he's very he's very good at what he does um, and then it'll close with Carl Smith. Carl will demonstrate the kinetic shift. He will demonstrate, um, he will talk about his uh, mental welfare coaching. Uh, he de deals an awful lot with trauma, um, uh, particularly post-trauma. Uh, he drops the D completely. He says it's not a disorder. Um, it's just post-trauma. And um, Carl was a, a former army man and policeman and his story is very interesting about how he got into hypnosis and hypnotherapy in the first place because he was knocked down by a drunk driver and it literally put him into a traumatic experience that hypnotherapy helped him out of and the journey begins um and that is the two days um it's until i think it's 4 30 on friday to give people a chance to, or on this sunday sorry to give people a chance to go home but There'll be loads of people still milling around afterwards for conversation. Um, and yeah, so that's basically the, the two days. And I must admit now, I'm like a child looking forward to it. And, yeah. and I will say to you, the power of hypnotherapy is that if you asked me, would I even consider doing this five years ago? I would have said, absolutely not a chance. I'm very shy. I couldn't be doing this kind of stuff. And now you can't shut me up. Yeah. <laughs> Well done, because it certainly seems a very comprehensive, you know, list of experts in their field, um, especially the fact that it's the very first Irish hypnotherapy conference. Yeah, and yeah, so it was, um, I've, I'm very lucky with, with the training and, and the training with Mike Mandel would have opened up an awful lot. I mean, that's where that weekend and I don't, I think neither of them will actually remember meeting me that weekend, but I actually met both Freddie and Carl Smith that weekend, the first weekend that I was over. Um, and then I've met them many times since. Um, and, but the training with Mike Mandel and just opened up those, those doorways. Uh, and look, it is the very first one. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there are things that I could do better. Um, and when it's over, I, we can review those. Um, you know, I anything that I think I might need to tweak, I'm doing it as I go along. Um, but the idea is really just to get therapists together um, and hopefully to create an ecosystem that expands beyond our globe, beyond that weekend. Um, and hopefully it's just to make it an annual event that people can come together and celebrate it in therapy. Just celebrate it. That's... that's uh an excellent way to put it to celebrate because you know we are all uh, you know the, the nature of therapists um generally speaking we we work on our own a lot of the time yeah. you know and there's a certain what would i call insular uh isolation and yeah. it's, it's all part of you know the, the, what you're doing what the eaph is doing is trying to bring people together you know, and to support each other. Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it's extremely important. It's that part. Not only do we need to earn money to to live, but we also need to support ourselves and each other in the work that we do. Now, the the conference, uh, I presume, it's specifically designed or geared or directed towards a therapist, hypnotherapists. Yeah. Are members of the public welcome? They are. And members of the public are welcome, but and anyone who has an interest in hypnosis will will yeah. will enjoy it. They will absolutely enjoy it. Um, but it is primarily aimed at hypnotherapists. But anyone who has an interest in hypnosis, um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know. I know, and, and all I can reference actually is the London one, because that's the only one I've actually been to. 
but that's open to everybody. It's a wonderful atmosphere that's there. It's, it's everybody sitting down and learning so many new techniques. Uh, um, the one that sticks in my mind, and I'm not sure if, if you're familiar with it, but I saw a demonstration by Richard Hill of mirroring hands at the, uh, at the London conference, and I absolutely adore it. It, 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 he, it's, a, it's a book that he's published with uh, Ernest Rossi, and it, it, it's an amazing, simple technique that, again, like a lot of things in hypnotherapy, you figure out logically this shouldn't work, but, yeah. you know, it really does. Um, it, so it's learning those. Um, and, yeah, it, it really is. It's just a, a chance to learn, a chance to connect, and hopefully a chance to grow. And I know that... Um the EAPH, we will have a table there. Yes. And in, in, in terms of, 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 you know, having tables, are there any other uh, organizations? Uh, it's been offered to, to, to other organizations. So, um, and I, I expect that they will be taking those up. Yeah, I expect they will. Is there anything else now, uh, John, that you finally you'd like to, you know, impart in this uh, video podcast or? I, you know, I, I all I actually really want, Aidan, is to, I, as you can probably tell, I'm quite passionate about hypnotherapy. I know how, 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 how effective it is, and I know the, the results that people get. I also know how working on your own is challenging. Yeah. Um, and all I want is for people to experience it. Um, Sometimes these events, they're not always about learning, you know, they're, sorry, they're not always about learning new methods or new techniques, but they're about exposing yourself to new people, new techniques, and seeing what works for you and what doesn't. And, and I think that's what that weekend is about. But it's also about having fun. It's also about having fun with like-minded people. Yeah, that's important. I think that's really important. Because it's it's in having the fun that the maximum learning takes place. Absolutely correct. And mm. that goes back to Freddie and, and the power of emotion and where the learning curves, as he says, never, never miss a good opportunity to empower somebody in some shape or form. And emotion is always the key to that. Wonderful. Now, John, in terms of your own work uh, as a practicing hypnotherapist, how, how can people contact you? Um, well, it's, it's empowergory.com is the website. G-O-R-E-A.com, um, -E yeah. So empowergory.com. Um, and my phone number, I can give it to you if you want. It's 086-858-1473. Give it again, please. 086 858 Excellent. Well, John, I really enjoyed meeting you on this podcast because, you know, it, it, you certainly you come across as someone who's, as you mentioned, very passionate about hypnotherapy and indeed very passionate about what you do. And congratulations on your first endeavors in organizing the very first, I presume, you know, Irish hypnotherapy conference. And may many people attend it. Well, hopefully. Um, but like I said, in it is, it's there. My job is to let people know and just to enjoy the weekend um, and to learn to meet and to have fun and to Excellent. support. You know, so so if anyone has any questions in relation to it, please, they have my contact details. And uh, I look forward to seeing as many people there as will be there on the day. Good stuff. So thank you very much, John Scanlon. Thank you very much, Aidan. Much appreciated.